I'm always left confused after cleaning my fridge. I have a hard time deciding what goes in the fridge and what doesn't, which items to eat and which items to throw away. You should be careful about believing internet hoaxes. Some people may be trying to scam you, and it's best to use caution before accepting anything from them. Here are 10 helpful tips to help you. Number 10. Eggs that float. If you're planning to have steak and eggs, you may want to toss your eggs in a bowl of cold water first. This tip sounded like an old tale to me, but it's actually true. If an egg is bad, it floats in fresh cold water, and if it's okay, it sinks. That's because eggshells seem solid, but are really slightly porous. As time goes by, a sack of bear starts to form around the egg sac on the inside of the shell. The older the egg, the more air gets under it. If enough air has gotten the egg to make it float, it's possible that it's still okay, but the odds are it's probably not good anymore, and you should float it to the nearest trash can. Number 9. Glued Meat Speaking of glue, you don't want your meat to taste like it either. And it might because some shops may actually glue cheaper cuts of meat to fool you into thinking they're more expensive ones. You see these two steaks, or are they? Those yellow joints show where the different types of meat were glued together. This is done with an enzyme called transglutaminase, and it can be problematic if an older piece of meat gets glued in the middle and that part doesn't get heated as well while cooking. The older meat may be harboring bacteria that doesn't get hot enough to die. Even worse, bacterial contamination gets spread through your piece together, steak. So how do you tell the difference when grocery shopping? A real steak should look like this without all those suspicious lines. The USDA insists that transaminase is listed on the ingredients of meat in stores. Unfortunately, the most commonly glued cut of meat is fillet mitten and destined for the food service industry. In that case, you may have to ask your server if Elmer's is on the menu. Let's find out with 10 helpful tips. Number 8. Olive oil. That doesn't smell like olives. I don't usually think of vegetable oils having a distinct smell because most of them don't. But it turns out that olive oil does smell like olives until it goes bad. Some experts say olive oil that's gone rancid may taste like rancid peanuts or smell like crayons. Award-winning chef Marcus Samuelson says that good olive oil should smell fragrant and fruity and that it should taste and smell like the olives it came from. He also adds that oil that's gone bad or rancid often tastes like glue or even motor oil. This leads me to one more question. Who has tasted motor oil and glue in the first place? No, don't tell me that's the latest thing in cuisine since laundry detergent. Number 7. Fresh veggies that turn yellow. If you're looking for a good excuse not to eat that salad, this might just do it. When fresh veggies start to go bad, they lose their color, often turning yellow. Broccoli and kale are especially prone to turning jaundice with age. Some vegetables like celery and onions can still be used if you cut off the yellow portion and soak them for 10 or 15 minutes in ice water. Wilted lettuce and greens are usually okay if you cut away the discolored portions but toss away anything with obvious mold or slime. Number six, canned food. It's hard to tell if canned food has gone bad because it's inside a can. And when I open it, the contents are usually mush, even if it is fine. While you may think of canning as a good way to preserve food improperly, canned goods may lead to foodborne illnesses, including botulism. So what should you do? As it turns out, there are several signs canned goods have gone bad. If the can is still sealed and the lid bulges moving up and down, when you touch it, throw it away. This is common when the can is leaky or has been stored in too cold or hot environments. Rusting or corrosion on the can is also a concern as this corrosion will eventually lead to microscopic of holes that bacteria can get through if you open the can and it explodes, that's also a bad sign. A can that hisses loudly or produces an acrid smell when opened, that should also be canned. Some will hiss just because they're vacuum packed, but a loud hiss indicates the food inside may have already gone bad and reacted with air and causing pressure, hence the sound. Now, what about dented cans? They seem harmless, especially when the grocery store is selling five of them for a dollar. But the dents may also compromise the airtight seal of the can, 
allowing bacteria to leaf through. If the lid is still tightly sealed, it should be okay. Otherwise, put it back in the bargain bin. Number 5. Never eat an oozing overly soft kiwi. Kiwis are tropical fruits that are often found in stores during the winter months, given that they keep pretty well. However, even these evergreen fruits will eventually go bad, spoiling your winter vacation at the dinner table. Choose a kiwi that's still firm with unwrinkled skin and no dark blemishes also. Avoid kiwis that appear to be out of a hand lotion commercial, meaning if they have very soft skin, you don't want them. When you squeeze the fruit, it should cave slightly, but not too much. If the kiwi caves too much when you apply pressure, it's probably overripe. A good kiwi will also have a fragrant citrus smell, while a bad one may smell pungent and sweet. Soft and slightly squishy fruit on the inside is another clue that it's time to retire your kiwi to the garbage bin. Number 4. Green potatoes can poison you. Like a lot of people, I've read that green potatoes can be dangerous to eat, but I also read on the internet that sexy singles in my area want to meet me, and that didn't exactly turn out to be true. Not that I checked or anything. However, that green potato thing proves to be true. When potatoes are still green, they contain high levels of a toxin called solanine, which can cause problems like nausea, headaches, and neurological symptoms. This toxin is produced as a defense against insects, and prolonged exposure to light and warm temperatures will raise its levels in the tuber. Most green potatoes never make it to the store. But to reduce the risk of solanine developing, you should store them in a cool, dry place like a cabinet. If you happen to see any green spots on your potatoes, cut them away before cooking, unless you want to feel green yourself. Number 3. Red Kidney Beans That Look Raw I know a few people who are on a raw food kick, but not all foods can be safely consumed in this state. Red kidney beans are one example of a food you don't want to eat. Even if your yoga teacher recommends it, they contain toxins called lectins, including one called fetomaglutinin. This could be harmful to your stomach cells, leading to nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain. Other beans have this toxin as well, but red kidney beans have the highest concentration. They need to be soaked in water for at least five hours before consumption, then thoroughly cooked, preferably boiling. Don't use a slow cooker as these may not get hot enough to destroy the lectins. Even beans that are slightly cooked but not to a high enough temperature can cause illness. Only about a half a cup of raw or undercooked kidney beans can make you sick. Number 2. Bacon. If it's grayish-brown or slimy, everyone loves bacon. Well, except maybe the pig. Sorry, Porky. But you don't want to be sorry if you eat bad bacon. So, here's some ways to avoid it. Look at the color of the bacon. It should have a fresh, bright pink color like the animal it came from. If it's grayish-brown, greenish, or slimy, Throw it away and thoroughly wash your hands. Spoiled uncooked bacon could be contaminated with E. coli or salmonella bacteria, which could cause serious illness. You may be able to prolong the life of your bacon by buying it last at the store, so that way it spends less time at a refrigeration. Definitely be sure to pop it in the fridge as soon as you get home and pay attention to the expiration date as much as you want that bacon if it doesn't pass the color test, or if it smells funny or off, you have to say, that's all folks to your beloved bacon. Your ticker will probably thank you too. Number 1. Cracked Watermelon Speaking of nice pink, healthy foods, I still don't know what to do about eating watermelon. Last year, a story circulated on the internet about how you should not eat a watermelon if you cut it open and see that there are cracks in the fruit. Turns out that was really a hoax. These are often referred to as hollow heart watermelons and are typically sweeter due to the concentration of sugars within the cracks. The cracks are caused by temperature spiking while the watermelon grows, which is pretty common because watermelons are grown in warm areas and warm times of the year. The cracks are completely harmless according to industry experts, despite claims that they can make you sick. The reason the hoax spread was because in 20, People were scarred by a story about exploding watermelons in China, but those were tested with a chemical that isn't allowed in the United States. Fake news then suggested that the cracks were a telltale sign proving you shouldn't eat them. 
The truth is, the watermelons grown with this growth chemical called orchlorphineuron are still edible. They just taste less sweet and due to their accelerated growth may have misshapen when grown. When choosing a water, look for one that feels heavy for its size and has a yellow spot, which means it was grown to maturity also, pick it up and give it a tap. If it has a deep hollow sound, it should be perfectly ripe and sweet while an under or overripe one will sound dull. That deep hollow sound is music to a watermelon lover's ears. What's the grossest thing you've seen in a food item that made you decide not to eat it? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.